All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome in to day one of our USAS beginner training. Um, actually, sorry, our USAS overview training. <laughs> uh, my name is Amanda, and I'm going to be talking us through day one. Uh, where we're starting off today is managing accounts. So we're going to be talking through the account codes and structures. Uh, we're going to be talking um, about the account summary reports and some account maintenance uh, options within the software. So we'll go through all of that today. Um, I know we have it for about till 1030. Uh, I was reviewing kind of uh, where we were at last year with the timing and it is possible that we'll go two hours today. Uh, I'll definitely try and keep it to the hour and a half if I can. Um, but of course, like I respect your time too. So if anyone has to hop out, we are recording this session and it will be available. Um, additionally, if you have questions as we go, uh, definitely feel free to put those in the chat. I have my um, chat window pulled up here or uh, feel free to chime in. I know recently we had um, someone use like the hand wave uh, or like the raise hand function. So if you feel more comfortable doing that, um, please feel free. But yeah, if you have questions as we go, please let me know. Um, I want to go ahead and show where our materials are here. So um, I'm just going to start and we're hopping over to the wiki. And if we scroll down here to our meetings and training section. And then scroll a little bit down here, we have our ITC overview training. So this is where you're going to find all the materials that we're talking about this week and for our other overview trainings. The agenda that we're looking at is here. And then um, we have our presentation that we'll be talking through is posted out here. Uh, let me just zoom out on this for a, a second because, um, so this page all together is basically gonna have like everything that we're talking about. And one of the really nice things about these overview trainings that we do is we'll post our recordings for each day but towards the bottom here, if you scroll down, and these are still linked from um, last year, but we'll update these once we complete the training this year. Uh, but these will actually be timestamps to the certain uh, times that we talk about uh, different topics. So, um, you know, if you do like have to walk away for a second, or like if you want to revisit even something that you're here for, and you're like, you know, I just want to hear that again. Uh, after the training, this makes it really easy to go back and just click a specific part um, and go right to the part that you're looking for in the training. So this is how it'll be broken out for today's training. Um, as you can see on the agenda, we also have tomorrow and Thursday planned as well. So uh, Pat will be going through the expenditure process and the receipt process as well. Um, so all of those good things we have in store for this week. Uh, but this is where we're starting. So, uh, okay. So let me hop over, close out our agenda. We'll probably, so hopefully we don't get too many tabs accumulated today here. So we're starting out with managing accounts. And really the first thing that I want to talk about is just the basics of what are accounts used for. So we're, we're kind of diving right in here to talking about like the accounts and the account codes specifically. Um, but actually having the different accounts within the software, what this helps do is it defines and organizes the district's money. It helps group like expenses uh, together. And then it's used for tracking and reporting of expended and received amounts. And so basically this helps districts organize their funds and breaking it down into specific codes can help with reporting different things, um, whether that's just them tracking, you know, expenses and money that they've taken in for certain buildings or departments. Uh, there are definitely um, official kinds of reporting, like the five-year forecast categorizes into line numbers. It's all based on um, the account codes that they've actually either spent or received that money into. So having these account codes defined is a pretty big piece of just how the general um, accounting process works for school districts in Ohio. This is Ohio specific. I mean, I'm sure other states have their have their organization, but what we're talking about um, with this specific account code structure. 
And so in saying that, the next thing I have here is, okay, so the uniform school accounting system. So, you know, you SAS, like you, you know, you've probably been in our state software USAS and um basically we have like our software but then we're also talking about uniform school accounting system um in the context of AOS because we're one of the places we're going to be in today is the USAS manual and the USAS manual is basically going to lay out the codes uh what the account codes are defined by the auditor of state so this is the introduction from that manual, and I feel like it's helpful to just read through this. We're going to talk about it a little bit. So the Uniform School Accounting System, USAS, is based upon uh, the use of a combination of dimensions, so different sets of codes, each of which supplies different elements of information. By selecting the most appropriate code within each required dimension, each financial transaction of the school district will be adequately identified. And this will make sense as we start um, looking through this. I know that these account codes can be a lot when you um, are new to them, but the basics of what we're getting here is, you know, the codes that they are charging things to, whether it's for a supply that they've purchased or whether that is a code that they're using in payroll to charge, uh, you know, to designate as like the pay account for an employee those codes all have meaning and they're all defined based on like what numbers we're seeing in those codes to designate like what that amount, what that money is being used for. So it's it's helping to adequately identify um, either the expense or the received amount. The use of certain dimensions to identify each type of financial transaction is the responsibility of management of the school district. The determination should consider the informational needs of the school district the Ohio Department of Education, and other regulatory agencies. For various reasons, certain financial transactions should be coded in more detail than others. So basically what we're talking about here is, it is the responsibility of the school district, it's the treasurer's office. You know, they're going, they, they build their account codes, they add new codes when they need them, they ensure that they're adequately charging their, um, expenses and receiving monies into the most appropriate code. Um, different treasurers, there, there is some flexibility here. So different treasurers may use the account code slightly differently, you know, whether they're defining to a more detailed level or sometimes we see, you know, less specific codes where you'll see more zeros involved in the code. And that's kind of rolls up to like a more uh, district wide expenses sometimes. And so you know, especially like at the ITC, you're working with multiple districts, you're seeing multiple charts of accounts, and they're not all going to be exactly the same. So, so that is something to note. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then the other thing, um, you know, I actually, I wanted to mention um, as far as tracking monies too. So, um, you know, I mentioned a couple of examples of tracking and reporting. Um, but really, like, this helps them represent money that comes from the state level or federal levels. Um, and as we get into looking at some of the fund codes specifically, we'll see how, how those things play a factor. Okay. Okay, so, so with that said... And we will, we're, we're going to be in the software too looking at these, but we're kind of just like, this is kind of like our basis for uh, what we're, what we're looking at here. So we're going to be specifically talking about these four types of accounts today. And the first type is the cash account. So the cash account is a total of all the expended and received amounts. I always forget I shouldn't click on this. <laughs> uh, of all the expended and received amounts related to underlying accounts. This is used to track the actual amount of cash that the district has in the bank. So generally, these are like the totals that they may be balancing to their bank. This takes into account. So this is like the actual, here's the money I started with. Here's what all was spent from that. Here's all what I took in. Here's all what I received to that. And then that ultimately results in their current fund balance or current cash balance. So that kind of takes into account these both sides. Next, we have the appropriation account. 
that's going to be a total of all the expended amounts related to underlying expenditure accounts. Expenditures are a total of all the expended amounts related to the transactions using that expenditure account. So expenditure accounts are the ones that you're going to see actually on the POs. You know, act, this is what's actually going to be put on, you know, a requisition, carried over to a purchase order. When the check is cut, this is where that actual expense, the amount that's actually spent from that check is going to be posted to the expenditure account. And from there, you know, the appropriation is kind of like a step above that where it could include multiple, uh, it could include transactions from multiple different expenditure accounts. Revenue is going to be a total of all the received amounts related to transactions uh, using this revenue account. So uh, similar, uh, similar to the idea of the expenditure, but it's when you're getting money in instead of spending it. And so when you see receipts, uh, the receipts are going to use the uh, revenue accounts on them to actually assign an account to where that money would be um, when that money comes in. And then, so, you know what, let me go. Okay, I shouldn't jump around. So what we're going to do is let's go to the software and let's actually look at, we're just going to take a little overview to start and look at how these are set up um, for you to view in the software. So let's get logged in here. And where we're going, so, okay, so first of all, before we just jump right into the accounts, I want to go ahead and just point out a couple of things on our homepage here, because this is our, so here's our homepage. This is what it looks like when we log in. Um, so uh, basically we have our menu along the top here and our core menu. So this is where we have sort of like our, um, some of our setup pieces. So we have accounts here. We have certain things like the district's organization information. Uh, this is where they maintain their vendors. But today we're gonna be in the accounts. So this is where we're gonna be heading first. As we get to some of uh, the later points on um, our agenda today, when we talk about, um, sort of be like account, uh, like ways to modify accounts and such, we'll look at a couple of things in the transaction menu as well. So this is sort of our home base today um, is, is mostly uh, this page. But before we go there, I also wanna point out up at the top here, uh, this little message, and this tells us what our current period is. So my, uh, my software right now is in March, 2024. So that's our current month. Whenever we look at, when we look at this account page, uh, one thing we're gonna talk about is like fiscal today, month to date, we'll see some totals there. Any totals that we're seeing is based on whatever this current period is in the software when we're looking at it on these pages. So that is an important thing to note. And I mean, so if that current period is maybe like, in a prior month, you know, because they're still closing, like, just keep that in mind. Whenever, when you're seeing these year-to-date totals, these month-to-date totals, it's going to be based on that period. So let's go in. Let's go to the accounts. And all right, so what we're seeing here, so we're going to see we have these different uh, tabs along the top here. So this is the first thing to notice. So we have fund, cash, appropriation, expenditure, and revenue. Um, this fund tab is more of like a grouping. So you'll notice I don't have like a create button or anything here. Uh, the funds are uh, sort of just some information related to like the overall um, fund code. But but let's look at let's look at the cash account because that's really um, when we look like that is, uh, sort of like the highest defined level as we're going to talk about it. Um, I know it can be a little bit confusing when you start because the fund, the fund code itself, the three digit code, this is referred to as the fund code. When we look at this in the USAS manual and we're looking at funds, it's referring to this three digit code. Um, however, it can also be, the term fund can also be referred to, um, as like sort of a separate cash account. So, 
sometimes that is a little bit interchangeable. I know that can be confusing when you start. <laughs> um, so um, I'll I'll stick to calling it a cash account for the purpose of our training, but I just want to mention that because I know it does come up. Um, but what we're seeing here is all of our different cash accounts. So um, the 001 is our general account. And I don't, I'm a little zoomed in here, so I might be missing my descriptions, but uh, but this is our general layout. So, you know, one thing we notice is this kind of has, it has a fund, it has a special cost center. This is what our, um, the basics of our cash level looks like. Uh, don't you worry, we'll be talking about this in more detail. We're taking a little stroll through the page first just to get a an overview of what everything looks like here before we start talking specifics, but um. And then we have our appropriations account. So we have fund, function, object, special cost center. You can see some descriptions. And this is where we would view and manage our appropriation accounts. Expenditure is, so this is, again, this is our level. This The expenditures are the ones that um, probably get, I don't know, I feel like the most attention when um, we're helping with stuff anyways, because these are what's actually going to be used on like purchase order transactions, requisitions, um, and see, we have touched on a little bit how it's like the more detail uh, can be included. And so you'll notice that this one has uh, the most numbers we've seen so far. So we have our fund function object, special cost center, subject, OPU, um, instructional level, and job. And so this is just the basics of what we're kind of looking at here. And lastly, our revenue grid. So this is going to show all of our revenue codes laid out there. Now, when you're navigating these grids, um, one thing to be aware of is you'll notice that there are some totals that are added onto these grids. And I believe I have mine set to the default. So so some of those are included in there. I would be careful. Uh, I know that it's, you know, I know that it's tempting to like add a bunch of figures onto these, um, especially if like looking at certain accounts, maybe um, if they have something like filtered down and they're looking at something specific. I would be careful adding too many calculated fields on here. Um, we have seen like, uh, okay, so here's this more option. So let me just open this, I guess, while I'm talking about it. And you see there are some other, uh, there are other um, totals, basically, that you can add onto this grid. So honestly, usually three to five, like that's totally fine. Um, it does depend on like how large the district's chart of accounts are, because these fields are going to be like pulled and calculated. So that's like more that the software is doing, more that the system's doing every time it loads that grid if they add on uh, more calculated columns. Where I'd be careful too is like, so if I'm on a revenue account, like if I'm on one account type grid and I open a section here, like this is cash account and pick something that's related to a different type of account. If you ever see that, that's, that's where I would be very careful adding fields that connect to other types of accounts. Um, it's not that it can't be done. But if they do it, I would just recommend like not keeping it on their grid for the next time they load. So uh, I don't want to get too deep into that, but just something to mention while we're looking at that. So the other columns that are on here, especially if there's a lot of calculated ones, is something that um, especially as support uh, is good to watch out for because if anyone's having trouble with their grid loading, it's usually a problem with something that they've added. So so that's kind of our general overview. That's what we're looking at here, um, where they can hop around, they can view their figures here, and they have some things they can add. But let's go back. Uh, so back to our presentation. And this chart right here is something that, like, especially if you're a new user like this, I know it may not like completely make sense at first, but as we talk through it, I'll probably refer back here later because this is the visualization of how this account structure works. So 
the cash, you know, we talked about that as being like, that's the highest level. Like the cash is made up of both the expenditures and the revenues. So the cash is kind of the grouping. It's like the header of everything underneath, everything that is assigned to that cash account. That's kind of like the top level. And when we're talking about expenditures, when we're talking about the spent amounts, there's a couple different levels there. Appropriation, so each cash account is broken out into multiple appropriation accounts. Those are slightly smaller groupings within the cash account. And then under the appropriation is expenditure accounts, and that's like the most level of detail. So say you have, you know, you have these three types of expenditure accounts. Those will all have a, they'll have an appropriation that they're associated with that will associate with that cash account. And so basically the cash account is going to be the least detailed and the expenditure account is going to be the most detailed. We're, we're definitely looking at an example of this, but this is a basic layout. Um, also within that cash account, because we know the cash account show up, shows us expended, and it also shows us received. So the part of that equation, the received, is coming from whatever revenue accounts are associated with that cash account. All right. And then before we go to the next part, I have a slide in here that's got resources we're going to be using and talking about. Okay. The SSDT wiki. So let's click on this real quick. Let's get this open. Um, so this is our, um, this is from our, uh, wiki page. This is our documentation is what I'm looking for, <laughs> more coffee. Uh, so this is our account page. And if you look here, so this kind of goes through and this is similar, you know, we're seeing like these different tabs that we just looked through, um, on that core accounts page. But if we look at some of these, so we have actually, so this is the cash account, but what I wanted to show is actually our uh, introduction here. So this has a little description here, and this is similar. This is what we're talking about here. The account structure is the most basic element of USAS. Um, you know, and then the Auditor of State's Office has established a chart of accounts that consists of four types, which track cash balances, expenditures, and revenues. I won't read through all of this, but this is here. You know, if you're learning accounts, there's some good information in here. Uh, this kind of goes through, you know, what, what we're talking about today. And then, you know, the sections under here, this is going to give more information about creating accounts, um, about the different options on each of these different account types. So this is a really good resource, especially if there's something specific that you're questioning. Um, this is a good place to come back to. So I have that linked right from the PowerPoint. The other thing, and we'll just get it open now because I'm telling you we're going to be in here today, this is the USAS manual. So there we go. Um, uniform school accounting system, user manual. Um, I know this is spring 2013, but they do keep it updated. And I think like at the very end is usually where they have updates posted. Uh, here, yeah, Appendix B at the end is updated regularly. Let's zoom in on this so make sure that everyone can see. And so um, the introduction here, so this is what we read through earlier. So this is where that uh, little burp came from that I kind of talked through already. And uh, what we're going to be looking at in here is, let me, sorry, let me go back up so I can click, is, uh, here we go. So as we start talking through these different pieces of the account codes, so you can see, look, account dimension listings. And as we clicked through that grid, we saw things like fund, function, objects. And so if I click these sections here, we'll see that it actually has code descriptions and it has the codes listed out. So if you're new to these and you're seeing all of these numbers in, in the system, in the account codes, and you're like, I don't know what this means. You know, it's just numbers. Like, it's not just numbers. This is such a good resource to try and wrap your head around this because once you can start connecting these codes with things, um, it it really does help. It helped me a lot with looking at stuff. And and some of them you'll get really used to, like the general fund. But you know, if you've seen, okay, 001 is the general fund, like that's because it's actually mapped out um in here. 
you know, certain things. I know we use an example all the time with the 006, that's food services. You know, we have, we were like, okay, 006 cafe. Um, but that's because that is what that fund is actually designated in here. Um, and you know what, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too far into funds. We're going to come back to this, but, uh, but this is the resource that we're going to be in. So I wanted to make sure that that is linked. We'll see that there are a couple pieces of the code that relate to the EMIS manual. So I do also have this linked. So let's open that up here. Uh, so the EMIS manual and uh, let me come down here. It's the subject codes. So uh, so we'll be so let's just we'll just queue this up for ourselves. Uh, let's not jump too much into into everything now, but. But, but when I have these resources that we'll be going through, they're all on this slide. And then if you go um, look at the PowerPoint, then you should be able to click those as well. Honestly, for like the USAS manual, um, I don't really have that like bookmarked or saved anywhere. Whenever I need that, I just Google USAS manual and it's usually the first thing that pops up. <laughs> so that could be a tip. Um, okay. All right. So let's move on. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to talk through the account code dimensions. I want to talk through what each one of these things are. And so this goes right back to what our introduction was, right? So by selecting the most appropriate account code within each required dimension, each financial transaction of the school district will be adequately identified. So um, basically the different pieces of this account code, um, each piece is going to tell you something different. They each have a meaning. And so I'm just going to talk through what each of those are. The TI, it means transaction indicator. <laughs> Excuse me. And so the transaction, I'm sorry, <laughs> the transaction indicator it defines the type of account or transaction. Um, it's not something that you may generally see in the software. Uh, there are places that it's at in there, but um, but you don't always see it on those grids. And one of the reasons for that is because we saw that breakdown, like we have a grid for cash accounts. We have a grid for appropriation, expenditure, revenue. So the TI actually tells you like which one of those account types the account is. So like the appropriation is like a specific TI. And so if you aren't looking at account codes in those grids, then this is a piece of the code that can kind of tell you which one you're looking at. And then funds. So um, the funds are the three digits. So we see here. And excuse me, um, just a minute. Let me just clear my throat for a second. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. So the funds are established by provisions or statutes to assure money is spent for specific purposes. Fund numbers are assigned by AOS. So um, the fund code itself is this three-digit code um, that we're seeing here. And this is like the first big piece to categorizing the account. So um, one thing that this designates is like, uh, is a overall, like, is this local funds, state funds, federal funds? Um, so an example of this is like um, for grants. So grants established by... Um, like by at the federal level, like if they are receiving money for a specific uh, federal grant, then there may be a specific fund code that they need to use for that so they can track the money that they got from that grant and the money that they spent uh, for that grant. So this is where, let me go back to our USAS manual now. So this is where I was getting a little bit ahead of myself here. But when we were looking at this page in our USAS manual, um, we can see that this first section I'm looking at is local funds. 
And uh, I will say one helpful thing whenever you're looking at these code pages is that I always we always can check this header to see, okay, we're looking at funds. I'm going to end up searching this instead of scrolling through it, and we'll always come back and check this heading. So, so here's like our local funds. Um, if I go to the next page here, I have a group for state funds. So you can see these codes. So if, so if I see these codes in like any, um, any district software, like these are the, um, different like purposes that they're used for. Federal funds are in the 500. So this is where we see a lot of the grants. Um, this is the federal grants and, and such. So I know five five sixteen is one I see a lot. That's the um, idea special education grant, um, and then there's like title title one title two. So all of these different um, possibilities laid out here, and then these are the codes that they would use uh, if they receive that grant. If they're if they're actually like um, accounting for amounts related to that grant in their software. So. So, so for funds, that's that's the first really big piece here, um, and these are laid out. So then from there, we talk about the function. So function is next here. It's four digits. And this represents programs, subprograms, activities that expenditures are classified. The more detailed to the digit, the more specifically defined. And so... Um, so functions you will only see on the expenditures on the expenditures side of the equation. So um, you'll see function in the appropriation account and the expenditure account. You will not see a function on a revenue account. It's just the just if there's expenditures. Um, and so basically, with this representing programs, um, this is also coming from the USAS manual. So. Let me see. I think I can just go pages here is what we want to do. Skip a couple pages ahead because I know it's next. Nope. All right. Here's where we use our handy search. So I'm just going to do control F. Control F. And that's going to be a find. It gives me this little pop-up window here. We're just going to search for a function. We'll go a couple... And look at actually look at the, these definitions are in the USAS manual too. So the, again, like I'm recapping this, I have a little description um, that we're talking through, but look at all of this additional detail here as well. So this is also um, a good place to come back to if you want more information on this. Um, I'm just skipping around here. We're going, we're looking for the section. We'll get there. Here we go. Okay. So functions. And then this is where the functions are laid out. And so this is where we see things like, okay, so um, so what's this say? The more detailed to the digit, the more specifically defined. What that means is when we look at this, look at, so if just the first digit is here, it's 1000, that means instruction. When we have two digits, so 1000, so um, 1100, zero, zero, that's regular instruction, but one two zero zero is special instruction. So it kind of is like it's a way to sort of categorize um, what these mean. And the more the more digits that aren't zero, the more detailed that is. So like if we look at this, let's uh, let's scroll down here and see some other ones. We have sorry, I lost my light. Um, let's see, let's do, okay, let's look at support services. So here's where, so then see, we have the 2000. So if it's 2000, Oops, turn this back on, sorry about that. Um, then this is supporting services. So see, because this first digit is now different, that's a different little category within the function codes. Um, and then, so 2100 support services, but if we had all four, like 2122, so all four digits are not zero, that's counseling services. So it's a little bit of like a little hierarchy there as far as what the groupings are. And we'll see how that works with the different account types here in a bit, but that's really helpful to know.
All right, next we have the object. So the, the function's gonna tell us different things like different programs, like what program is this being like used for or, you know, the money's, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the money's being spent for, like what program, what activity, but the object is more so, um, it defines the goods and service. So like, what is it being, like, are we purchasing supplies or are we paying for people's salaries? And so that uh, for that more um, identifies like what is being spent on. And again, that comes from the EMIS manual. You know what? I'm not going to keep jumping to the EMIS manual for every single one of these because I don't want to get too confusing here with jumping back and forth. But same idea as us looking at um, how we looked at the function codes is there's a section for objects in there. And that's sort of broken down by code so that you can see the detail of like what each object is actually for. The special cost center is next. So the special cost center is this four digit one. And um, this is used to track costs to satisfy temporary or special requirements, may be used for each special project that uses restricted monies when more than one project exists in a given fund. So this is the other one that we saw used in combination with the fund code on like the cash account level. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. I actually have a separate slide, but, uh, but basically this is like another identifier that's kind of used with that to um, help identify like what the cash account um, would be or to categorize different costs. Then we get into the subject. The subject is used to identify specific educational costs. This one, it works a little bit like the function code where the digits of the code itself are significant. So the first two digits are the subject area, and then the additional four characters provide a further breakdown of subject areas. Normally, not all levels of detail are required. This is the one that comes from the EMIS manual. So let's let's go look at this one. EMIS manual and uh, where was it? Here it is. Okay, so it's on the course record subject codes. And let's click on this and take a look here. Let me make sure I'm zoomed in so everyone can see. And this one, let's see. Do I, have, I wish I had like a... I could just do next page, but there's probably a button. Okay. So when we're looking at this, we have, okay, so we have these different tables, academic content area section, and you can see here we have like, okay, so dance codes, drama theater codes, and when, when it's saying that, okay, so the first two digits, so like here's the first two digits, which actually this is interesting. It's showing um, three here are consistent, but, um, and then the rest, so like the rest of that code is designating the kind. So both of these are drama theater codes, but one is drama theater in K-8 and one is theater arts. And so basically based on which code they use, that would designate like which one of those um that the funds would be, that the account is going to be relevant to. And you can see, okay, so here's music code. So that is always going to start with one, two. And then we have music K through eight, general music, music theory, you know, and, and so on. And all of these things sort of go together because they're all related to music. But uh, the second part of that code is going to designate which type. So when you see these, um, this is where, this is where they relate to. Uh, the subject codes, um, I forget exactly, I feel like these ones have certain, um, these ones are like pretty specific to certain account types. So I believe there are like some cases where it's, I mean, it's, you, as you can see, like this is related to certain, you know, it's related to subject matter, right? So um, certain accounts are going to need to have the subject codes. Some accounts that don't really have to do with specific subjects um you'll see you'll see as all zeros a lot so it depends on what the account is for but 
um you know it's definitely common not depending on what kind of accounts you're looking at to not see these filled out as much uh as some of the other ones especially like the function you're not going to see all zeros but uh subject you might all right and then next we have the opu opu is the operational unit the operational unit it's used to identify facilities in the system this can define a building, department, office, etc. It's used to identify costs by unit or facility, and these codes are determined by the district. So the OPU, you're not going to find what their OPUs mean in the EMIS manual, in the UCS manual. Where you're going to find this is actually in, the, in each district software itself. So um, when we're in the software, if we go to core, OPUs, each district has defined in here what their OPU codes are. And so again, these are three digit codes. And so you can see in here, this could be things like high school, like their administration building, and then they're each associated with an IRN, with the IRN of the building. Um, their elementary schools may have unique OPUs, you know, obviously depends on like how uh, the size of the district if they have multiple elementary schools um obviously this is test data so i'm seeing like a lot of different high school codes here that that may not usually be the case but but basically when you're seeing these different codes like that's all going to be just based on whatever district's data you're looking at that's based on their specific um layout for the codes so you know sometimes you'll see it like this where it's 001 um sometimes you'll see 100 like there's no real specifics as far as like how they have to like use these codes. Uh, you know, the high school is not always 001. Like it can be whatever they want it to be. But this is the page where you're going to find out um, where you're going to be able to see if you ever needed to like what those are. And then instructional level is used to differentiate between grade levels or educational levels. So um, again, this one, we don't see it used on all account codes, but um, it basically breaks down to like um, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you know, it's going to break down to like the actual grade levels. Um, or if it's zero, zero, that is uh, usually district wide. So the, it may not be defined to an instructional level, but especially when we start looking at things like like if we think about this, you know, those subject codes, we were seeing a subject code for music that's K through eight. So I might have expenses, you know, I maybe I have, uh, you know, kindergarten through eighth grade with that subject code, then the instructional level on the account is going to tell me which of those grades. So I might have multiple accounts with that same subject code. And then the instructional level is going to tell me which actually of those grades the account, the uh, the expenses are for that are being, you know, and then you're going to use those account codes for the expenses to the correct um, level. All right, next we have job. So uh, the job is another one that relates to the EMIS manual. And um, the job is used to identify staff costs. So helpful for relating staff costs to the activity for which they are assigned. Um, the assignments identify the staff member by his or her duties rather than their job title, since the job titles for the same position may differ across the state. And um, okay, so this one is in the EMIS manual as well. And this one is in um, position codes right here, 3.9. So sorry, I probably should have zoomed in on this one before. Uh, 3.9 here in the staff records. And so if we look here, like numerical listing, um, so th then these can be used in that job code uh, position. And again, like this is for a pretty specific use. This is related to staff costs. So you're only gonna see these on certain kinds of accounts. And then last, I have the receipt code in here. So you'll notice, I'm just flipping back a page here. This one, I kind of have it um, on this screenshot. It's next to the function code. So remember when we talked about the function, I said this is only on the expenditure accounts. 
the receipt code is only on the revenue accounts. So uh, this is kind of like the counterpart to that function code, and it's used to identify revenues in various funds by the source from which they were received and the purpose they serve. Um, and then, so again, these are um, from the USAS manual. And so the examples of this would be like uh, taxes or food services, uh, maybe like extracurricular activity fees. So this is going to say, this is going to define more like, uh, so it's by the source. So like, where am I getting this money from, right? Because revenue, it's you're receiving money in. So it's it's helping define where that came from. All right. Any questions about those codes? I have a couple more things. I'm going to go back to the special cost center here. But um, again, if, if you have any thoughts, any thoughts or questions, um, just let me know. Okay. So the special cost centers, um, there are a couple things with these. So first of all, when you see those special cost centers, if the special cost center number is 0 to 8999, those are considered part of the appropriation and cash account with the special cost center of zero. So they roll up. So if you see an, like, say you see an expenditure account and it has a special cost center of 0005, that is going to be a part of the cash account that's got all zeros. Special cost centers 9000 to 9999. <laughs> uh, so basically, like if it starts with a nine, they act as a separate cash account in that fund. So uh, if we go back, let me go, let me hop back to our account um, grid here and let's look at this cash grid because you'll be able to see this when you're looking at this. So we have our fund, we have our special cost center. So notice on here that our special cost centers, they um, either are all zeros or they start with a nine. So see, we, as we scroll through here, we don't see any that don't start, that aren't zeros or starting with a nine. And so when we have these different cash account levels, that's uh, that's relevant to know. Um, honestly, so where I see this a lot is because, especially within some of like the grant accounts, uh, those break down where, you know, say, okay, so, you know, we talked about how the fund may be used for like a federal grant. Well, they may um, receive that grant each year. And so they want to keep the money received from the grant and spent in the grant for fiscal year 23 separate from fiscal year 24. So in that case, what they may do is uh, use that the fund code that they need to use here. Actually, let me just put in a five here so I don't have to scroll. Um, so uh, so they, they use the fund part of the code. So they have the correct fund code for that specific grant. And then the special cost center, they could have um, you know, it starts with nine and then they have the fiscal year and then the next year it starts with nine. They make one for the next fiscal year so that they can kind of categorize and keep all of those separate, but it still is its own cash account so that it has an initial cash and an ending balance and a fund balance at the end. So, so that is, uh, definitely a significance with this special cost center. The other thing is that special cost centers specifically, they are allowed to contain alpha characters. So A, B, C, D, like it is possible to see alpha characters uh, in those special cost centers. And then I already <laughs> uh, got ahead here and used this as the example is maybe use a tra track different fiscal years. So um. So yes, so those are important notes on the special cost center. And then last in this little section here is, um, is I made a little quick reference. So we talked through all of these things. Again, like we have more information, more descriptions of those things in both the USAS manual. You can find information on our wiki page. But this is like the little snapshot of when we looked through these, 
where did these come from? You know, the use S manual, was it district defined? Was it something that we found in the software or the EMIS manual? And this is kind of looking through um, where each one of those things came from. Okay. So now let's put these pieces together because we've talked through what each one is, but when we clicked through our grids, we, like I kind of pointed out, like the cash account is just the fund special cost center. So like, let's look at these, all right? So the cash account fund and special cost centers, so this is what a cash account looks like. It's made up of just these two pieces. Appropriation account is the fund, function, object, and special cost center. And then the expenditure account is fund, function, object, special cost center, subject, OPU, IL, and job. So what we're seeing here is that not every account type has every piece of the code. It depends on which account type as far as what elements it's going to include in there. Um, so let's see. And then, um, okay. And then... On the revenue side, the cash account, um, again, is like still above the revenue account. And the revenue account is fund receipt, special cost center subject, and OPU. Now, uh, let me just make sure. Okay. So let me point it out on this one. So one thing we're going to notice, and where we're going next is we're going to look at a very specific example of of an account code so that we can get a like get a good example of like okay well let's kind of put these pieces together and and see what this means but but what i want to point out on this page is so notice we have our cash account here can i zoom in on this i can okay so notice we have our cash account here and so in this is like a very simple basic example account but our fund is 001 and our special cost center is 00. Now, if I look at these accounts that I have under here, fund 001, fund 001, and special cost center is all zeros. Now, because this expenditure account and appropriation account, because these match this special cost center, this is going to be the account it rolls up into. So like if I only had the expenditure account to look at, I could tell you based on those two pieces of the code, what the cash account for that expenditure account is going to be. The appropriation account. Um, so this, um, it has the other pieces. So fund special cost center, the function is defined to two digits. So remember we were looking at like the level of detail with those functions. So that is going to be 1100. The object has one, has just one, the first digit defined, you know, that we're seeing and it is not a zero basically is, is what we're looking at. So that's 1000. But when we look at this expenditure account, we have the function and then we have the object. And so this would because this has the same first digit and the same first two digits, that's what makes this part of this appropriation account. That's how you tell it's part of this appropriation account. It's going to be grouped in with that because it has those commonalities. And uh, if that doesn't make sense, yeah, hopefully with this, with the example, we'll kind of put this together a little bit more. So here's where we're looking at the account example, okay? So... In this example, what we're going to look at is a cash account is a 300-9534. The appropriation account, 300. And then function, 4500-500-9534. Here's our expenditure account. And so uh, notice we have the underline. So he, this is the cash account. Boom, 300-9543, special cost center. 300-95, I'm sorry, 34, special cost center. So we can see this expenditure account is part of this appropriation account, which is part of this cash account. So that those pieces keep this related. Again, the function starts with 4-5. The function starts with 4-5. So, so that relates. 
but what does it mean? <laughs> so the other thing, so now what we're going to do from this is we're going to kind of take this and talk about, you know, okay, now we're seeing like a lot more uh, different numbers in this. So let's talk about how we figure out what this means. And what we can do is we could actually break down this code and go look at the different pieces and we're gonna and see that this is, okay, so this actually is district managed student activity. It's middle school girls softball supplies. And so just by the pieces in this code, we can see that that's what this account should be used for. So, so let's go back then. So the fund is 300. So we're going to our USAS manual for that. And let's go to, okay, so here's a trick. So we searched for function before because we wanted the function section. The other thing, sometimes I'll just search for the code. So I, okay, so I put in 300, I get a 300, but this is where I want to make sure I use my header. Funds, okay, cool. It's a fund, that's what I want. And here's the fund. So it's a district managed student activity. So that's my first piece. Everything that's in this 300 fund is going to be a student act so this is the student activities fund function is next okay so let's go and then you know this one so it's four five three four that's pretty specific i can probably search this four five three four scroll up make sure this is function that's what i want okay so four five three four is softball That's the most defined level, right? But let's look at the header to make sure we got the full detail. Okay, so this is girls sports team. So uh, 4530 is girls sports, is girls team sports. And then this is softball. So that's how we know that. While we're here, let's kind of look at this code because it's a good example. So uh, the 4500 is all sport activities, all sport oriented activities is included in uh, 4500. And then this grouping is boys sports teams, individual boys sports, girls sports teams, and um, individual girls sports. We have mixed sports. So like each one of these different categories uh, sort of designates like a different sport type. And then when we have all four numerical digits is not zero that's telling us exactly which sport that that account is supposed to be used for and so when we're talking about like kind of these being more specific or less specific like in this case when we're looking at this so the the things that I'm going to charge to an account that is just for softball is going to be you know maybe equipment that is just used by the softball team but there might be expenses that are charged to girls' sports in general. And so in that case, I may use a less defined account. And so that's where sometimes, you know, sometimes these levels are more specific, sometimes they're less specific, and it just depends on what the what the charge is supposed to be for. And also how the treasurer wants to do it, how detailed they want to get. The next thing is the object. So our object is 510. Again, we are going to our USAS manual. Let's do 510. And look at this, four digits. We see function at the top. That's not what we want. We want an object. So let's go to the next one. Nope. Nope. Okay, three digits, 510, scroll up. This is our objects. Okay, so um, we're looking at uh, general supplies. Okay. So 510 is general supplies. Now, if it was like a more specific type of supply, uh, like office supplies or something, I could use a more defined object code. But for the case of this one, I'm just using the general supplies code. The special cost center, that's district defined. So we know because it starts with a nine, it's a separate cash account, but but it's actually, um, you know, we, we don't have to look that up in a manual or anything. The subject code, this is a this is like a sport related account. So it doesn't have a specific uh, like subject matter, like a course or something. So we don't, so that's gonna be all zeros. The OPU, again, that's from our software. So let's go here. Let's go, 
Let's go to the OPUs. And we'll just type in our code here. And so I can see from here, code 300 for our OPU is middle school. So that's where I'm getting that information. OPU 300 middle school, okay. It, the instructional level is zero, zero. So this, because it's not just like one specific um, grade level or instructional level, that's just zeros on this account. So it basically associates it with like district wide. Job, this isn't like specifically a salary account or anything. So, uh, so that's all zeros as well. So that gives us, so based on those pieces of the code, that's where I know that this is middle school. So it's a student activity, middle school, girls softball supplies. And, you know, it is, uh, it's helpful as you um, continue to like look at these codes. I mean, obviously like, I don't know all the codes off the top of my head by any means. Um, I know some treasurers know them like the back of their hand. I mean, of course, there are some that get very familiar. Um, but as, you know, especially like at the ITC, if you're helping out your districts, it does help to get acquainted with these because there are certain things that you'll see, you know, pretty regularly. Like, like um, when we're looking at objects, you know, we're looking at an example, an example of uh, <laughs> of a supplies account. But there are also um, there are also objects related to uh, say the salary. So let's scroll up here a little bit since we we're on the object section. So let's look at this real quick. Okay, so object. So here's our first page. So um, one hundred personal services, employee salaries and wages. So like if I see um, say like a one one one, that is going to be. Um, certificated employees salaries and wages so especially when you start to kind of connect with this with the USPS side you know the account codes that you're seeing being posted from the payroll posting it's going to be related to um, account codes that are specifically for salaries so this is um, the certificated this is um, non-certificated salaries and then if I scroll down here to the 200s, I have employees retirement and insurance benefits. So uh, those like employer distribution postings, you'll see a lot of those, you are, when you see those, they'll have um, corresponding object codes that are specific for what they're posting, whether that's retirement, um, that would be more like the employee retirement posting if they use that, or like insurance benefits here. Um, and then, um, you know, a couple other things. So, so, and then it's down here where it switches to like purchase services and the 500s was where we had supplies. So, you know, those, like, as you continue to see them, uh, you'll, you get kind of familiar, you know, you pick a couple up that, um, that you see commonly. So, so that's helpful as well. Um, and then let's see here. So then we're kind of going back now and we had the different levels where we looked at the expenditure level. Now we we talked about how this is the appro uh, the appropriation account associated with that, that expenditure. And so this one is the higher level. So it's a little bit less defined. It just starts with the four or five. And so if we look at this um, and we go to those same places, you know, and pick these pieces is the fund, it's the same. So it's a district managed student activity. The function is that higher level. So that's where we saw sport oriented activities. The object is supplies and materials. So everything in that appropriation account is going to be for sports supplies. So when we're talking about how that rolls, like how it kind of like rolls up, how it has this hierarchy, um, and then I guess let me say this and we're going to go back to our chart because the fund is just the district managed student activity for this special cost center. So let me, oh, no, nope, that's not what I want to do. Let me open this little side thing and come back here. Okay. So, um, you know, when we talk about this chart, when we look at this chart, so the cash account, so in this grouping of our example, the cash is going to be here are the expenses for my 
for my student activities, right? This is my student activities. And like, say we associate this with the fiscal year, right? So this special cost center is for fiscal year 24. So my student activities for 2024 is my cash account. And all of the accounts that I have under there represent the money I've spent for student activities and the money I've received. So like any fees that came in for um, like, you know, students with those sports, any like money that we've raised from the events, like any money that came in related to those activities and any money we've spent is all going to be represented by that cash account. Next, the appropriation account. So that's where we saw it. this was like um, that was all sports um, supplies. So one of our so one of the appropriation accounts that we have in this cash account represents the total of everything that I spent on sports supplies. So that would give me the totals for any of the supplies I spent on any of the sports that it within like a certain category, right? Um, and then down at the expenditure level, like that's where I see the detail of like, oh, okay, so I spent this much of it, of it towards softball, this much of it towards tennis, and this much towards baseball. And it's like girls softball, girls tennis and, and boys baseball. And I could see the actual breakdown of like which sports, which groups at that expenditure level because that's the most detailed. So that's kind of how these work together with the actual example. I keep clicking the wrong one there. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All righty. So let's get back to where we were. And all right. So we're here. Okay. All right. Do we have any questions about that? Um, before we sort of switch gears here, we'll start talking about the actual updates to accounts. All right. All right. So next we're going to start talking about um, actually looking at the, like how you would create accounts within uh, UCES. So first we're going to go through, let's go to, we're going back to our core accounts grid. And let's see, so let's uh, go through, I'm going to go over to our expenditure grid. We're going to, we're going to kind of work from there. And um, let's look up this account that we're using as an example to kind of see, you know, with first we're looking at kind of sorting and filtering this grid. Uh, if I type in the account code pieces here, it'll narrow it down and show me any matching accounts. So we can see I have my account here, this 300, 4534, 510. Um, this is the one we looked at as in our example. And let me pull my description over here. District manage activity, softball, general supplies. So that's the account that we were looking at there. Um, for revenue, same thing. We can pull this up. We can um, sort of filter our grid down to see the accounts here. There we go. And then... Um, Let's go to our expenditure. So then we're back over here. What, what we want to do if we need to make a new account is we can do create. And it's going to pop up a window here that's going to give us um, all of the options that we need to actually make a new account if we need to add one to the system. And um, all right, so let's go ahead and create an account here. I'm going to keep it in the same fund and special cost center. We're going to go with a different function though. Oops. So one, two, one, zero, the object will do one, 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 you know, and I, I, and I was thinking about this. I'm not really sure that this example makes like a hundred percent sense having this like salary account. Cause remember the object code one, one, one is like a regular certificated salary. But I just want to show how a different code will be categorized into a different appropriation account. So, so uh, don't think too much about the actual <laughs> use of it. But uh, 
but maybe, you know. So, okay, so here's our code. Here's our function, object, special cost center. We'll, we'll make it in the same OPU, so that's going to keep it in the middle school. Uh, before we move on past that, let me just note up here, we have a couple options when we're making, uh, when we're like adding um, here. And if I do create new, what will happen is once I update everything and save this, it'll open a new window with that's like a blank slate to add another record. So if I had to come in here and say I need to add 10 account codes, if I use this create new option, I can enter my account code, save, enter my next one, save, and it would just keep pulling up the new window to make that easier to add multiple records in a row. Close, if I have that checked, when I save this, it's just going to close this window so I don't have to manually close it. I'm going to uncheck both of those, and then when I save, it'll still show us the account that we made. So, so we'll leave that unchecked. The description I'm going to leave blank for now. I want to, um, I'll show you how that works. Active is whether or not this account is active. Um, and let's see, uh, the XREP code is a little bit more uh, advanced. So we're, we're going to skip that one for now. But the start date and stop date. So if I want, if I, say I was adding an account, but I didn't want it to be able to be used yet, like maybe I'm adding it for the new fiscal year, um, I could put a start date in there and this account won't be able to be used on any transactions that are dated prior to that date uh, or stop date. You know, if I wanted it to only be able to be used until a certain date, any transactions that are dated later than that date, it won't be available for and then I have some standard custom fields at the bottom. All this stuff in the middle, we're going to actually talk about in a bit uh, with a with not a new account. <laughs> but let's save this up. And so when this saves, we see this warning up here. An associated appropriation account did not previously exist. One was automatically created. So this is one reason why I wanted to use a different function and object, even if it didn't fully fit with our narrative here um, of like what the account's doing. So notice that, okay, so every um, expenditure account is going to be associated with an appropriation account with a cash account. So because this appropriation level account didn't exist, the software created it and it knew what kind, it knew what the code would be based on the codes that I entered in for this account. So fund 300, Function starting with the same two digits, so one, two, zero, zero. Objects starting with the same one digit, and then the special cost center. So that is, um, that's really helpful. If I wanted to create a new account, like based on a previous one, I could clone this. If I clone the account, it's going to start with the same code, and then I could just change it. Like, say I just needed to make, you know, it was very similar. There's just one piece of the code that's going to be different. I could... Uh, clone that and save it and then I'd have another account. I can edit this. Uh, if I edit the account, um, there are certain things like I can't change the account code once I make it, but I could change if I needed to add start stop date. Um, if I wanted to inactivate this, I could and then that would make it no longer available to use with transactions. Um, and then the other thing, okay, so then we're going to talk about this description. Remember, I did not put the description in, so it automatically defaulted this description. And if I go back to my grid here, uh, so this is, here's my new account. So I did not enter it. So what it did, district managed activity, academically gifted, regular search. So what this did is it, it basically generated a description based on the account code pieces. And that relates, let's see, this is exactly what we were seeing, district managed activity from the USAS manual. So it it just, it um, added a description based on the code that I used, basically. And we we're seeing that with the other codes here too, right? We're seeing that with these other ones, district managed softball, general supplies, 
that it was just defaulted. Uh, it was left to be defaulted and it based it on what the account code means. Uh, the other thing is, okay, so then we have this delete option. Once the account code is used, if it's used anywhere or has any association with like another record, it can't be deleted anymore. Um, it can it can always be inactivated though. But uh, if I, you know, I just made this account, I haven't done anything. Sorry, this is my new one. I haven't done actually anything with it yet. So um, I can delete this since I just created it. Say I just, I miskeyed something. I don't actually need that account um, in this fund. I can delete it. We have something in the works to archive accounts. So that's like a step further than actually inactivating them. So we'll have that um in the in the future we'll have a, a different option as well there but for now um yeah so delete if it's just you know basically never been used just created uh is mostly when i'd say you'd use that but um inactivating is, is pretty much the go-to uh let's see okay let's go to the cash accounts and talk here so when we're looking at these cash accounts, notice you can edit these as well. And this also has the active checkbox. Now, one thing I want to note, if I inactivate, so let me go to, let's go to our fund here. If I go to my cash account and I, make this not active and then I save it then the cash account is inactive any accounts that use that cash account will not be able to be used on transactions the system is smart enough to know that if any one level like so if the cash account level or the appropriation level is inactive accounts that are underneath that that have like the same special cost center uh, same fund special cost center uh they won't even show when somebody is going to enter a requisition or a purchase order like that account won't even be available to use one thing though is if i just uncheck this to make it inactive again it can't be used but it doesn't automatically uncheck the box on the uh like appropriation and expenditure levels because it doesn't need to uh, but that is something to be aware of. So if you're like just looking at the expenditure and, and you're getting like a message that you can't use it, it also helps to check the higher level accounts to that. Um, if it is something where, uh, you have districts that are inactivating cash accounts and they want to make all the accounts with them inactive just for like reporting and viewing and certain things like the filtering, things like that. Uh, we do have a mass change definition that's able to help with that. Uh, again, that's like a little bit more advanced, but I want to mention it because um, just if that is something you run into, I want you to know it exists. <laughs> and uh, you can always put in a ticket to us if that's something you want to use, or it is in our appendix in the mass change sec section. So so that's, that's um, just something to uh, keep in mind as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then let me cancel out of this. And then the other thing that um we have on here so uh let me look at wait let me make sure i kept that active active true okay so all right so if we're looking at our cash account um the other option we have up here is this mass add option and so what the mass add option um, is used to do is it's used to add a new cash account and all underlying accounts. There are specific uh, like accounts, there's specific like situations where this is used though. So the first thing is the new account that you wanna make cannot already exist. It cannot be an existing cash account. It also has to be in the same fund. So the example that I was talking about where, you know, they may have, okay, so they, I have my fund code like uh, 300 and maybe I used like these accounts as my special cost center for 2024, but I want to make accounts for 2025 because I'm going to use the same, like I, st I still have all the same sports next year. 
So I need all the same sports accounts codes. I just need them to have a different special cost center so I can track it for that new year. So what I would do is use this mass ad option. And you'll see, this tells you, you know, okay, so this, I'm going to copy. So what I'm going to do is copy all of, I'm going to copy this cash account and all the appropriation, all the expenditure, all the revenue accounts that are associated with that fund special cost center. I'm going to copy them, but I'm going to make the new special cost center a new number. And this can't, this, this is where it cannot already exist. When you submit it, uh, I forgot to check if I have 9535 in here, so we'll see. Nope, it already exists. <laughs> I must have used that one before <laughs> when I was uh, showing this. Oh, okay, hang on, hang on. This is what we do. We'll stop guessing. So let me just, I'm going to take out the special cost center and let's see what we have. So 9534 we've already used, 5 and 6. Okay, so we'll use 9537. Okay, again, mass add, 9537. We'll go ahead and submit this. Now, uh, this one I know is like a smaller fund, right? We were just looking at our account grids. We had filtered to that and there weren't too many accounts in there. But if this is a large account with a lot of account codes, that could take a minute when you let that process. So like be prepared for that because it is gonna be doing quite a bit of work in some cases for bigger funds. But um, this one we can see, okay, it made our new cash account. Here's the appropriation accounts it created, expenditure accounts, and then our revenue accounts. And all of those now have the 9537 special cost center. All right, so that is basically, you know, creating, viewing, editing the account codes. Uh, maybe not fully view, we're gonna be viewing them more. Um, but do we have any questions on um anything there? And we'll let's kind of peruse through our um PowerPoint, but I think that uh we covered all of this stuff. This is kind of just for reference at this point because we looked at it in the software instead. Mass ad accounts. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk about the expenditure account totals. Um I'd like to take a little break here. I know, again, I feel so bad. I know that we were like, we're, we were like potentially an hour and a half um, for these sessions. We used to do them in three hours and then we're like, okay, if we don't need it to be that, we'll cut it down. Um, but I, I still want to talk about, I still want to talk through the rest of the information I have because I think it's very helpful um, again, this is all going to be recorded and broken out on that page. So, you know, I totally understand if anybody has to leave, I feel bad going over, but, but, um, I want to take the time to also talk through this while we're here. So, so let's take a little break. Um, let's just do like five minutes. It's 1023. I just want to make sure I know we've been here for a while. So if anybody needs to use the restroom or get some more coffee, <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just step away for a minute since we're talking through a lot of info. And so we'll come back. So what, 1023, that's like, uh, so we'll just take five and we'll come back and then, uh, keep going. Let me pause this recording. Okay. All right. We'll keep rolling here. So, um, Next, what I want to do is go through and talk about uh, some of the account totals, how those are calculated, what we're looking at when we look at these um, like actual accounts. So let's go back here. And again, we're on our core accounts expenditure grid. I have my accounts pulled up here where I'm looking at, and let's go look at this account. So this, we were looking at the softball uh, general supplies. So I'm going to pull this one up so we can take a look at it. Let's expand this to make sure it's big enough to see. Now, uh, actually, let me, just kidding. I'm going to minimize it. <laughs> so uh, I pointed this out at the beginning, but I want to go ahead and mention it again is uh, the current period here, March 2024. So as we're seeing figures, now this is the part where we're going to start looking at these account totals. And when we look at these account totals, 
this is going to be um, as of March 2024. So uh, let me scroll down here. So what we're seeing, and first thing to point out, fiscal year is this first column. Month is the second column, and then the calendar year. So the month, March, fiscal year, March, it, March 2024 is fiscal year 24. Calendar is the calendar year associated with March, which is, uh, again, 2024. So, but that'll kind of all be determined based on, based on the current period. So, uh, so what do we see in here? So the first thing I want to do is talk through these fields. Gap original budget. So this is going to show uh, the gap initial, any gap adjustments is going to show in this column. Uh, that happens when the actual budget is posted, like the initial budget or um, any budget adjustments can be applied to uh, the gap, uh, gap original budget amount. Um, the initial budget is posted, this can be posted two ways. It could be posted through the budgeting process and that would come from the proposed amounts in the budgeting pages. Um, or it can be entered directly to an account uh, using the budgeting adjustments, which we'll take a look at an example a little bit later. But uh, so the initial budget can be posted um, one of those two ways. Uh, we definitely aren't um, going to be able to get into budgeting today, but we did a budgeting session in February that is recorded and available out there. So um, if you want to learn more about how those initial budgets get in there, definitely check that one out. The carryover encumbered. So what this is, is as of July, uh, July 1st, June 30th. So as of the end of the prior fiscal year, what encumbrances were remaining? So whatever amount was encumbered, which the encumbrances come from uh, basically what's on the PO but hasn't been paid yet, that encumbered amount. So whatever was outstanding for um, POs, for encum remaining encumbrances as of June 30th, then gets posted as the carryover encumbrance on the account for this year. Now, even if those POs are paid later, it does not change, like in the new fiscal year, it doesn't change the carryover because that's basically like a snapshot of uh, what it was coming over from the prior year. Adjustments would be if there's any budget adjustments that have um, happened. So if there have been changes to uh, what they wanted to have budgeted, but maybe they don't want to change the initial amount, but they want to change the available balance. Like what can be, um, what can be posted this account? They can enter an adjustment. And when you're looking at this, we look at this as an equation, right? So we start with the initial budget. It adds the carryover encumbrance amount. It would add or subtract adjustments depending on if they're positive or negative, and that equals the expendable total. So what the expendable total, so this is a this is a calculation, this equal sign. This is a calculation of the fields above it. And what the expendable is, so right now, um, because we're on this expenditure account, this is gonna be like, here's what I can spend in this case for softball supplies. So these fields up until this point determine what the district expects or like wants to spend, what they've allocated, appropriated to spend for this purpose, for the purpose of whatever this account code is. So the expendable is basically what's available for them to spend. And so if you think about this in the context of like, maybe a, you know, um, a district managed student activity, like, so the softball coach, uh, you know, maybe the, or the, probably the athletics director, but in combination with, you know, whoever um, from the district, like they may say, okay, how much do I have available for the supplies that I need this year? They are given that budget. And then when they go to enter requisitions uh, for like what they want to purchase, they know that that's going to be their budget amount. So the expendable is what they have available to spend um, on that account for the fiscal year. The actual expended. So this is what they have spent so far. What has what has actually been cut as a check? What has been spent from this account? 
encumbered is what have I, what do I have a purchase order for? What have I said I'm going to spend money on that's still outstanding? Like I haven't actually cut the check yet, but I have a PO. That's what this encumbered amount is going to represent. And then again, look, we have a calculation. So our unencumbered balance is going to be the expendable. So what I have available to spend minus what I've spent minus what I said I was going to spend. And then here's my balance of what I have left. Uh, and then this one is not month. This is just the percentage of what I have left. So I actually have 83% of my available fund of my like um expendable amount i have 83 percent left at this point um if i consider in what i said you know I, I haven't actually made those purchases on the po i haven't cut the check yet but i said i'm gonna so we're including that in the calculation future encumbered is going to be um that's going to show the amounts for any purchase orders that are dated after the current period the requisition amount. So this one will only show if they have the pre-encumbrance module enabled. Uh, and that tracks requisition amounts. Uh, usually they have it on for um, if they have like uh, balance uh, checking when they're, so if their users enter requisitions and they want it to have, you know, they can't go negative on their balances, they may have that enabled. And then lastly is going to be the remaining balance. So that's the, again, this is a calculation of, you know, whatever this unencumbered balance is minus these two pieces. And that's the, the actual remaining balance. The future year encumbrance, um, future year requisition. So these fields are like additional um, items that can be tracked. Next year proposed, this also um, is related to the budgeting process. So this would show if there's any uh, next year proposed amounts that are sitting in the proposed amount grid and budgeting. I do show and talk about that in the budgeting training that I mentioned as well. So so th that's what we're seeing on um, like an expenditure account. Let's now go to, we're gonna make our way through these. And okay, so here is the um, appropriation account that um, our, our expenditure account that we looked at rolls up into this appropriation account. So I, I won't talk through every single one of these fields every time, but I just want to point out, you know, look at, we're seeing pretty much the same fields here. We have initial appropriation. Um, we have the carryover adjustments, expendable. So what's available to spend for this entire appropriation account, what's actually been spent, and then the balances. Now you'll notice that this is higher, right? Like, so the, the appropriation on our expenditure account was 5000 uh, but this one is 7,500. And the reason for that is because this has multiple expenditure accounts that, that are underneath it. So this is like the total of any matching expenditure accounts. So this is sort of like a bigger grouping that it's showing you. So this is how much they would have um, expendable for all of their sport activity accounts that are that are in this grouping. And then um, let's look at the revenue side. So again, this is gonna be similar. Um, it's a little bit different on the revenue side. Like we have a we have some we have less fields here, but uh gap original budget, that's the same idea as we already talked about. Initial revenue, so um, you know, on the expenditure side, the initial budget is like what they expect to spend. On the revenue side, initial revenue is like what they expect to receive. So here's what they are planning. Here's the money that they believe that they're going to be getting in this year. And then, uh, so that's the receivable. Actual received is like what actual receipts do I have posted to my system for this account? And then here's how much I have remaining that I'm still expecting to get that money in. 
Um, and then again, just notice that these work as a calculation. So initial revenue plus or minus any adjustments equals the receivable amount. And lastly, let's head to the cash account. So now cash account puts it all together. Uh, oops. Nine, five, three, four. Okay, so now when we look at this, um, again, notice we have our fiscal year, month, and calendar year figures. But, but when we're looking at the expenditure, when we're looking at the revenue, that whole first part is like expendable. It's the um, initial budget, initial revenue. And when we talked about those, those are like what we're expecting to spend or expecting to receive. So on those accounts there's sort of this element of you're like anticipating what you're going to get, right? When you're looking at the cash account, that's not the case. The cash account is based on all actual figures. The initial cash, this is not a guess. The initial cash is what, what was the starting balance for this fiscal year? So as of June 30th, the prior year, whatever the ending remaining balance was on this cash account gets rolled over. So, and again, they would take like all of their cash account totals and they would balance this to what's in their bank. So, so here's the cash that they started with associated with this account. The receipts, so this is actual received, not what I'm expecting to receive. Like this is my actual, here's the receipts that I have on the books. Expenditures, here's what I've actually spent to this um, account, to this to any accounts that have this fund and special cost center, this is what I've spent. This is the checks that I have. This is like the actual amounts that have been posted. And then this is where we have our fund balance. So this is the fund balance right now based on where my cash started and what I've actually done so far within this fiscal year. We have some more balances here. Like this one takes into account the encumbrances, which again, that's related to the purchase orders. I know Pat's going to be showing the process with, um, you know, the actual expenditure process, and you'll see more of how, you know, the purchase order to the check process works. But um, that actual encumbered uh, encumbrance step is um, kind of separated out to show here with the unencumbered balance. And again, we have future encumbered. Pre-encumbered is requisition amounts if they have that enabled, and the remaining balance. So that's probably the biggest thing to know. And honestly, where I feel like this comes into play a lot, we're going to um, start looking at the account summary reports in a second here, is the cash account is unique in that it is showing both sides of the equation, both the receipts and the expenditures, but we're not talking about budget. We're not talking about anything that's been like budgeted as like a anticipated amount or an appropriated amount when it comes to the cash account. All right. All righty. So uh, let's go through. I, I'm just going to flip through um, our uh, PowerPoint here because I talked through these things, but um, that's kind of a secondary resource. If you're looking back through this later and you want to reference these, uh, these are all the fields that we kind of just talked through here. Appropriation, revenue, um, cash account totals. Boom. And then uh, next, we're going to talk about the account summary reports. So when we start looking at the reports, one thing that's important to remember um, is that, first of all, these correspond to the different account types, the different accounts that we've been looking at this whole time. But the totals, the fields that are on there, are coming directly from what you're seeing on those accounts. So like this says cash summary, cash account totals. So when we're looking at our cash account, um, and one thing that helps, especially, obviously this is like definitely more advanced. Um, so we're not gonna get into any like custom report, you know, report customization or creation. But sometimes if you're looking at the fields that are on those reports, and if there is a case where you're trying to do some sorting or subtotaling, um, 
keep in mind that, or if you're adding fields, rather, if you're trying to add different like totals to the report, the amounts in the the field that you're seeing on there, like they, they're coming from this page. So when you see month to date total, it's pulling month to date total from this grid for this account code. Um, and so this is just a little like review of like, okay, here's the report. Here's where those totals are coming from. Um, like the, the actual grid and, and the account detail. So let, let's look at that a little bit, a um, little bit more then is all right so here is an example of a cash summary report and our examples are kind of just run for this account that we're talking about um there might be some slight differences in uh just a couple of these figures because i know my carryover was different than when i took these screenshots last year so uh so don't mind that but um so if you see any differences like it's still the concepts still apply <laughs> All right, so uh, the first one, cash summary report. We're looking at the full account code is the cash account, so fund special cost center. Here's our description. And then see initial cash, the fiscal year-to-date received. So we have initial cash, and then fiscal year-to-date received is fiscal year receipts. Fiscal year expenditures is the fiscal to-date expended. So these figures correspond to directly what are coming, what you're seeing, you would also see on the cash account, you know, and then you have your fund balance, uh, month to date expended, month to date received is coming from the month to date, the month column. And so basically, uh, you know, and here, let's, let's actually go run this, um, let's go. So you could do this, you could get to this from the report manager or it's going to be, uh, it can be on the home page as well. So if we run our cash summary, let's make sure we don't have any query options in here. And let's just generate this report. Now I'm going to generate it. I took out all my filters, so I'll generate it for all of the cash accounts, but um, but yeah, this is a pretty simple, straightforward one. Um, but just, you know, you got to remember that you're seeing, you know, you're seeing all actual figures on here. One thing that is really helpful to keep in mind is, okay, so when we're looking at this, come down here. So here we go. See, we have our uh, cash account, initial cash, fiscal to date received, fiscal to date expended. I probably should zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, initial cash, fiscal to date received, expended, and then our fund balance. Now, if we remember on the cash account itself, we saw that it's initial cash plus the received. So plus the received minus the expended equals the fund balance. So, you know, it's on, it's as an equation on that um, account screen. And so that can kind of help when looking at this is remembering that these totals are a pretty simple calculation. Um, and then the revenue summary. So again, um, and we won't, we won't run every single kind for, uh, for time reasons, but um, again, you can see on here that you have receivable, so that was the receivable total. The received amount is the actual receipts and then the remaining balance. So um, that that also corresponds to what you see on that account page. Same thing with appropriation and the budget summary. Um. Now, if we look, so let me see. Okay, yeah. So if we look, one thing that I want to point out here is if we look at this, so we have um, our different account codes. We have the, um, this one is our baseball. This one is softball. This one's tennis. Now notice that we have, you know, this much. So this softball account in the middle is the one we were looking at, but um, all of these accounts actually match this uh, this appropriation account. So they would all roll up into this appropriation account that um, how, kind of how we talked about before. And so if we look at this, I specifically have the examples in 
um, in this screenshot in the presentation showing all of the budget accounts that are included in this appropriation account. And you can see the totals are the same, but when we're looking at an appropriation summary, it's just the appropriation account. When we're looking at the budget summary, it's got each of the three individual accounts that are included in that appropriation account. So see this totals, these totals match. And why this is relevant, why I want to make sure to point this out is because when we're looking at reports like this, if you start at say like the cash account level and there's something that is not matching in a cash account, like the district's trying to balance, they know this cash account, there's something that's not right. If you then run the appropriate, so say it's something with an expended amount, if you then run an appropriation summary, narrow down which appropriation account within the cash account. If you can determine that, then you can run the budget summary report and then have it just matching the parameters that would match that within that appropriation. And when you do that, then you can see all of these different detailed accounts. So when you're doing something like that, when you're looking at balancing and you're narrowing it down, if you can figure out like which which actual expenditure account the difference is in by using that method to narrow it down, then you can just go look at all the transactions. You can see all the checks that are associated with that expenditure account. You can see all the POs um, and there are different reports, the transaction-based reports that can do that. But we're focusing on the account-based reports for now. And, and so that's where, um, that's where uh, this can be helpful to know this account structure because that can help you narrow things down like this. Okay, Oop. let's do this. Um, and then, you know what, it's funny, I'm getting ahead of myself because look at knowing the structure can be useful when balancing figures on reports. So, uh, so this is what I just kind of went through there. And then um, again, the, the reports pull figures directly from the account pages, so it can be helpful to refer to the totals when customizing. All right. All right, our last little section here. Our last little section here is account maintenance. And this is where I know I said at the very beginning that we were gonna talk about a couple things on that transaction menu. And uh, this is where we're kind of getting into a couple of those. but. But first, adjustments. Um, again, these are all clickable links. Let me close some of my other links here. <laughs> Let me get this narrowed down. Uh, so this is on the actual accounts page. We have budgeting adjustments on an expenditure account. And so this is the section that actually gives you kind of the step-by-step -step, um, for the budgeting adjustments. Again, transfers advantages. And, and distribution error corrections as we get into those. This will link to the wiki pages if you want to go back and review those. Okay, so um, if we go back to our core accounts and we go to our expenditure accounts, I pointed out this button before, but let's just take a look here. And uh, let's open, so I'm going to view the eye icon to view, view our account code. And I'm going to click this button at the top for budgeting adjustments. And what I can see here is um, I can see any existing adjustments that are within, uh, based on the current period. So like this is within the current fiscal year. So I can see this in here. This is our initial. So when we are seeing that the initial budget is 5,000, this um, corresponds to that. Now, there are a couple ways that these adjustments can get in here. And I mentioned this with initial, it's the same thing with budgeting adjustments, is um, they could either be created directly from this pop-up. And when I create this, if I didn't already have an initial, I could have posted this as initial, which I did. That's why it's got this weird description because I posted this <laughs> as I was preparing. Uh, what's probably more likely that you'll see is you'll see a description that says it's from proposed amounts. 
that's from the proposed amounts grant, and that's from the, bu the budgeting process. So um, the, the initial amounts can be posted in mass from the budgeting process. There is a way to post um, budget adjustments if they need to adjust partway through the year. They can post adjustments through that process as well. We have a whole walkthrough. Again, I do talk about that um, with the with posting adjustments as well on the budgeting training. Um, so today we're just looking at the manual way. So this is probably more so used just if you have like a couple budget adjustments here and there versus like any kind of large grouping um, that would need adjusting. So you come in here. Um, the date, you just want to make sure that this is an open period. Transaction type is adjustment. And then I could add an amount on here if I wanted to reduce. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do that. Um, let's look at our amounts. Hang on. Can I move this over? Okay, let's look at this. So um, let's talk about our example before I go put in numbers here. So our initial budget was 5000 I carried over 350. Um, so our expendable, like what we have available to spend, um was 5,350. What I've spent so far is $580. And then I have purchase orders open for 350. So my unencumbered balance right now is like over four thousand and I still have 83% left of what I said I was going to spend. So let's just say in this case, like it's March, you know, like they should have spent, you know, what they needed already. This seems like way too much for what they need. So why don't we go ahead and reduce their budget um, so that we can keep control of, of it, make sure they're not going to just go ahead and spend like an extra $4,000 right now. So We'll do a negative. So let's do negative 4,000. And I'm not really sure if this is how they actually would determine this or anything. This is just a, just using an example. Um, but uh, so we'll go ahead and do this and say, um, put my little initials there just so we can see that it's different. Um, and then we would click post. Now, when we do this, we'll see this on our little pop-up grid. So we have adjustment, we have the description that we can see there. Um, and then we see on the account, it added it to this adjustment section, right? And then our expendable went down. Uh, what we spent didn't change, what we have on purchase orders didn't change, but the unencumbered balance did because now it's taking this minus this minus this equals this remaining and we only have 31 percent remaining which seems a lot more reasonable so uh so that's how they would enter a budget adjustment uh and then let's talk about um oh i do have a link to the walkthrough if they need to mass uh if they want to do like a lot of budget adjustments and they want to do it with a spreadsheet here's a link to the walkthrough for how that works and on the presentation, I have these little lists with these transaction types that we're talking about of what reports is this going to impact. So when I enter this budget adjustment, it is going to, it changes the expendable figure, which is the, the fiscal to date appropriated. So it's going to change that figure on the budget appropriation summary. Um, if I had made an adjustment to a revenue account, it would change the revenue summary. And then we have a couple of reports. So SSDT budget transactions or budget transactions summarized by appropriation. Uh, so let's go look at this report real quick. Report manager. SSDT budget transactions. So uh, let's just generate this real quick. Um, when I generate this, I can enter in, let's enter in today's date. This is going to pull based on the date of the um, budget transaction. So when I enter that budget adjustment, I let it default to today's date. 
So I'm pulling this for today's date because that's that was the date on the adjustment that I posted. If I had customized and changed that to a different date, then um, we'd put that date instead to see it. Or I could do a range. Like if there was if I was actually looking for like a range of um adjustments that I did and I wanted to report, but I just pulled it for this one for our example. Uh, but you can see here's the account code that I made the adjustment to and the date, the description, the amount. So that's just a little summary. Uh, there is a version that would summarize it by like appropriation account too. So you could see all the adjustments entered by a, a pro like four accounts associated with an appropriation account. And then transfers and advances. So this is the next way that um, different figures can be updated uh, related to account amounts. And um, the transfers and advances use expenditure and received amounts to move amounts basically between funds. So a transfer is considered a permanent movement of money. Advance is expected to be repaid back to the originating fund. So uh, let's go look at these. This is going to be in your transaction, transfers, advances. And okay, so when we create one of these, let's just hop right in here. Let's make this a little bigger. So when we create one of these, um, what we'll notice is the first thing you choose is the type. So a transfer is saying that um, it, it's not expected to have to move the money back. Advance would be repaid at a later time. Amount and date is going to be, so let's say, you know, this is where you would put, this is the amount of money that I'm going to move from one to the other. And notice this is fund to fund transfer advance. So where this becomes relevant is when we were looking at those cash accounts, we said we have the initial cash and then anything that's received, anything that's spent, that's calculated into a fund balance. Now, that fund balance, you know, obviously, ideally, there's money in there, but especially with some things like grant accounts that have like a very specific amount that's incoming and being spent, um, there's situations where like they don't want those to be negative, especially at like certain like the end of the year, say. So they might advance money over from one fund, so maybe from their general fund to another fund in order to make sure that that cash balance um stays positive. But then they're gonna pay that back at a later to they're gonna move that back once they get in money from whatever source that that they're gonna be getting it in from. Something like that would be an example. Um, so this is where we put in our description. So we'll just put in a random description here, but sometimes, and you'll probably see on my example grid, sometimes it's like advance this fund of this fund or advance for this purpose. Like they might put in a description there. Um, and then we're going to pick accounts. Now, when we do this drop down. What well, one thing I want to point out is that the debit account, so um, this is going to be like initial advances. Um, you'll see that this function code and this object code are specific. When we look at the different account codes that are used for any transfers or advances, they have very specific function and object codes. And the software knows that only certain codes are to be used for certain types of transactions. So it'll only show them in this list. That's why this list is so limited here because we just have um, certain ones that would qualify to be used for an advance. And then uh, this would be like, for the advance, the advance is going from one account to another account. So um, again, notice these have 5210. That's a very specific receipt code that should be used for this. So we'll pick one here. And then we'd save this up and that would um, do the process of then making a post that would essentially move that amount from this fund, from the general fund, 
to the um this this um activities fund and uh then so because this is an advance we wouldn't usually do this right away but uh, when they're ready to repay this, when they're viewing this advance, there's a repayments window down here where then they can click to add a repay. And maybe they're not repaying it all at once. Say they're just repaying 200 of it at a certain time. They can do that, add a description. This will default to the accounts then that the repay accounts. Notice these have similar but slightly different uh, function and object because these are the codes that are then designated as a repay account. And if we go look these codes up in the UCS manual, it's going to say that. So these are specified by the UCS manual. That's why why it's those codes, because it goes connects right back to what we talked about at the beginning um, with how those are defined. And so let's do this, save this up, and then that's going to be a repay um, for repaying that, that advance. I do have uh, listed here. Oh, so here's a note about those codes and they're defined in the UCS manual. Um, and then, okay, I'm getting ahead because I was uh, already getting ready to talk about the reports. So uh, the account impacts. So a transfer or advance into an account will be added to the received amount because they're, so it's basically, it's receiving it into that um, account. And this will increase the cash received, which will also increase the fund balance. I'm adding money to that fund. A transfer advance from an account is going to be added to the expended amount that's going out, that's outgoing, like as if money was spent, in this case just being moved. That'll increase the cash expended amount, which will decrease the fund balance. I, if I'm moving that money elsewhere, I have less money in the fund. Here's reports related to transfer advances. So if we make uh, if we make a transfer, the cash summary, again, that's going to impact expended or received amounts. The overall total, like the overall balance, isn't going to change because they're just moving it within their accounts. But the individual totals of the cash accounts that they changed, that they transferred from and to, those will change. Um, as well as like the specific accounts on budget uh, revenue summaries. We have transfer advance activity and summary reports as well that sort of summarize the transactions that we would see in this transfers advance grid. Okay, last one. We're almost done. Uh, the transaction... Um, um, menu again has this next one distributions and error corrections and what this can be used for so hang on let me go back to my probably have a little summary here so we can see it while we're talking through it so this allows the user to redistribute expenditures if the expenditures are charged to more accounts than the purchase order was originally issued or to correct an error in a previous expense. So basically what this is used for is like, it, it's not going to, it's not going to be changing transactions. Like it's not going to be changing purchase orders or checks or anything like that. But what it can do is it can change. Like when we're looking at those account totals and we see like, here's the actual expended will say something was expended on the wrong account and we want to actually update that to make sure that the expenses are not on this account and they're on the other ones. Like, so in our example, we had softball. So say we had purchased something in the softball account. It's actually being, it's actually going to be, it should have been on the tennis account. It's too late now. We don't want to go through voiding and reissuing checks. We just want to correct the what was expended on each account so that we can correctly account for that on reports. And maybe we want to free the budget back up on the softball account so that they can spend it again. Um, so what we would do is come in here, do create. And uh, the date is going to be when that change takes place. That's going to impact mostly the reports. It's got to be in an open period, so we'll leave it in the current period. Description can be whatever's going to help them. 
uh total items so we'll we'll hop back to that but let's go ahead and start adding a couple items here to take a look uh one note is if i'm using this to correct expenditure accounts i can only ever um i can only have expenditure accounts like within this specific transaction so it's either expenditure or revenue within one um like transaction window transaction number uh, it can be used to correct revenue amounts, though, as well. And the next note is that this, the amounts, always have to equal zero. So I can have more than two lines, but I have to put positive and negatives in here so that it always will end up equaling zero. So let's do... Um, Uh, and then this is where, you know, let me, let me do a couple things here. Let me make this a little bigger for us. And then we'll start typing our account. Oh, this is another tip. Because this page can handle um, both expenditure and revenue accounts, those, you know, remember the account codes are like a little bit different on those, like the the revenue accounts have the receipt number instead, they don't have as, it doesn't have as many pieces. So if you're typing this in here, this one is just unique because it has, it could be either code at this point. So it doesn't know if you're going to add another digit or not. So just put a dash at the end when you finish the object, and then it'll know, oh, okay, you're looking for expenditure accounts. So it'll show them here. So that's a little tip to remember. So, okay, so here is our softball. And what we're going to do, so let's say uh, we charged $100 to softball, but we actually want to move that over to the tennis account. So we're going to do negative. So we're doing basically a negative to the expended. And then this has to equal zero, so we have to put $100 on this other account to equal zero. And then, okay, so I know that this is going to be four, five, three. Um, What was it? Four, five, three, two, maybe? Oh, no, wait, that's basketball. Hang on. Let's just double check. I feel like this happened to me last time too because we get because I try and guess at these account codes because we're like later in the training and I'm trying to make sure we get our time uh we we uh don't take too much time but uh it's easier if we just go look all right so let's see What is going on here? Now I scrolled over too much. All right, so tennis is four, five, four, six. Okay, so I'm going back. I just opened a separate tab, so we're still in this transaction. Four, five, four, six. We'll make sure we grab the same special cost center here. And so then when we do this, it's going to go ahead. We'll save that up. And that will update our accounts. So let me refresh this since we made a change. Go back to our expenditures. And... Let's just make this smaller. Oh boy. Hang on. I think it's, it's just have my window zoomed in, so it's giving me problems. All right. So then when we look at this, all right, so here is um this was softball. So now we'll notice, remember this was five, five eighty, so now it's four eighty. So what we actually expend is reduced. We have more available now. And when we look at the tennis account, which is this one, we can see we actually have $100 expended. So we just like moved where that spent amount, where that expended amount 
um, was being posted to our accounts. And then um, we have, you can see the account or the reports rather that that will impact. So, um, you know, especially like if you're in, in this case, we did expenditure accounts, we did a change on the expended amount. So that would impact the uh, budget and appropriation summary. There is also a report error corrections and supplies distributions that will show you a list of those transactions that were made as well. And that's it. We made it through the end of day one. So thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, I know this is longer. I think we'll have to probably uh, just make sure as far as time we uh, relay that a little bit better on the next one. Because I think because I think all of this information, I really um, feel like going through in this level of detail uh, can be helpful. And especially for going back. Um, again, we will be um, taking this information after the overview trainings and breaking it down um, to uh, have links to the different points in the recording of everything we talked about today. And uh, let me just pull up our agenda again real quick uh, so we can see here. Um, tomorrow we'll be talking about the expenditure process. So we'll be starting at 9 a.m. again, uh, starting with requisition processing and kind of go through um, and, and, you know, talking about these pieces, requisitions, purchase orders, payables, disbursements, expended, that's going to be how those actual expended totals get onto your expenditure accounts. So in the next couple of days, now you'll actually see um, where the figures, where we're talking about um, both sides of those cash accounts kind of coming together and um, actually getting posted. So, okay, before we go, are there any questions at all um, that we want to talk about or revisit before we wrap up? Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much for attending, everyone. I hope you have a great day and uh, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Have a good one.